Hey everyone, welcome to part two of the contemporary style landscape, uh, contemporary Texas style landscape, sorry about that, and going to show you how I'm going to plant this front yard that we just finished designing. Um, as you notice here, if you remember, they had the uh, parking constraints here in the front yard, so we wanted to make sure that we had plenty of room to park and then get up to the front doors. You see the front door here, and if you notice, I'll have another video of the existing house. Um, but they didn't have the gables. They wanted to make some changes there as well, too. So let's get started. So the first thing that I recommend doing uh, as a designer is to have your plant palette over here on the side. And what I do is I found the best plants that I like to work with personally. And these aren't the only plants that I work with, but they are a, they are a majority of what I deal with. You definitely have to make sure that you know whether you're dealing with uh, full sun or full shade or what you, what's going on and then the style being contemporary we want a little cleaner lines but they definitely wanted stuff that was most of my clients when they say contemporary they more prefer evergreen type planting and these clients were far from that they wanted a lot of flowering objects but we want to make sure that we have them in clean lines following the radiuses of the beds um, just keeping things nice and clean but with Texas style more of a arid at least especially in our area things that can tolerate a little more a um, little more drought resistant bringing in the colors that you would think that would be uh, Texas style some silvers maybe I have some silver foliage in this pineapple guava that I chose here and I wanted it to be a medium height in there um, and then I have some purple lantana going around this edge. This is a perennial, so it means it'll come back year after year and provide lots of color. Um, and I love the purple lantana because it doesn't get overwhelmingly large. The new gold lantana just gets to be so big. And then there's some other varieties that get to be even larger than that. And I was just putting in some sunshine ligustrums. I thought the bright golden color of the new growth of the sunshine ligustrum would just be amazing. I did a Texas mountain laurel over here. It doesn't get to be too large, so I can plant it pretty close. And if anything says Texas plant, it would be a Texas mountain laurel. Um, over here on the side, evergreen, lots of evergreen. They've got a window here that leads into a bathroom, so that was security kind of thought for them. So we did a larger shrub there, a wax myrtle in front of that, and then some evergreen viburnum suspensums gonna do some baby gem boxwoods here I love the baby gem variety very hardy not as disease prone as a Japanese boxwood and it stays shorter so they won't have to prune it as often finding that right plant for them so they don't have to spend tons and tons of time pruning uh, just will save them tons of work down the road grasses grasses fit that kind of Texas style so some pink muley grasses here some uh, dwarf uh, hamlin grasses around that pineapple guava those guys only get to be two feet tall or so um, the pink muleys are just phenomenal their color in the fall I can't tell you when they're when they're putting their show on in the fall I get so many requests for that pink muley grass um, did a knockout rose did a little crepe myrtle here thought about adding some height there on that side but I thought you know it's just really cramming that that walkway there Texas style again kind of something that can take up that full Sun that it's gonna get in that afternoon this is the west side of the house so it's gonna get just an incredible amount of Sun there and like I said plants that can take a little bit of abuse so I did some little some more dwarf Hamlin grasses and maybe a sweet olive there in front of that column take away the height of the size of what that column is going to have to be to support that gate and I just thought a sweet olive could get to be a little bit larger and also provide a nice fragrance for this area as well too um, some annual color making sure your your guests just feel overwhelmingly welcomed when they're walking up to the front door is very important um, so I thought this would be a great showpiece for some annual color not too much it would only take maybe two or three flats in this area and it can really give a nice punch and the greatest thing about annual color it can change as you change you know your your the what co colors you like uh, what styles you want to try whether you want super low maintenance or whether you want flowers or color foliage you can really change it up here and that's what makes annual color so much fun 
another sweet olive there to really help punch in that aroma of what it would be and these windows here on this little bay window part are so low that I had to get something that would still keep it open safety wise you never want to put a large shrub really blocking windows because then somebody could be hiding right back in here um, and could have broken into the house and you'd never know it just from pulling up so dwarf bottle brush um, love these guys here just they provide good they have lots of good red foliage in the um, all through the summer so they're just very um, not an overwhelmingly amount of flowers but just a very nice touch just kind of looking for some more plants in here what can I pick so I decided to go with a firecracker just to add a little softness I have this softness of the grasses but overwhelmingly didn't want too much um, too much structured they definitely did not want to have this super layered super structured um, uh, landscape planting style so let's see here and I did I found this this year this uh, blue rug juniper and I've just had the best luck with it it's deer resistant has kind of a bluish green foliage it's real soft a lot of clients don't like the junipers the low growing ground covers because they're prickly they're really hard to the touch the blue rug has just been a really nice addition to the plants that I pick Nandinas I love Nandinas that's what these guys are here um, they can be a little finicky if your water isn't right that's what it almost always is if your Nandinas are going uh, losing their foliage they they don't like it too wet um, and a lot of people here especially in Houston tend to overwater. Um, do some more Nandinas they're evergreen what's so cool about them is if they're happy in the winter the colder it gets they add their foliage turns red and so it's a really nice pop of color uh, compared to everything else um, in the um in the winter months so it's just fun I always like doing kind of an evergreen backdrop behind annual colors and you could do I did some grasses here you can do some one gallon boxwoods just some different varieties of things it really gives a nice backdrop to the um, to the flowers so want to make sure too that if the flowers are gone which there are periods of the year where flowers don't look their best you can pull them out and the evergreen backdrop back behind there will look will 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 suffice for a period of time so this is the existing house now you can kind of see they just have that straight driveway going up this is where it goes in the backyard of course I'll deal with that with in parts three and four but right now you can kind of see how all of this is lawn they have a, a simple walkway that just kind of just doesn't really have any shape it just kind of meanders up to the front door uh, with this layout here we aren't having to take up the entire front yard with a with a circular driveway um, we just did this nice little parking area in here and you can see all this and I'll go into 3d here in just a moment and you can see a parts of the uh, finalized video here so here you can see the blue rug junipers of course this is just my idea this is the best that that this program can do as far as representing these types of plants was this laid out exactly as an andina uh, according to pool studio the program that i use no but to me this looks as close to the nandina as i could find and so that's really with everything this is actually what they call a dwarf crepe myrtle in pool studio and I just think it looks represents a um, dwarf bottle brush really really well now this does happen to be a knockout rose and this just does happen to be pink muley grasses um, so there are some things that I could do in there that did match exactly what pool studio does but getting your clients to understand that you know exactly what these plants are and this is a very close representation to what it will actually look like again doing the evergreen I don't show that there's a window actually right here and this one particular spot they did want this window covered because it is a little bit higher it would be a little more difficult for people to crawl into that window but they wanted to make sure that they had privacy in that window because the neighbor's driveway actually goes right here and even seeing a silhouette of somebody in the bathroom just really if you haven't seen it before it's a little odd so making sure that you know client that you give your clients the privacy that they desire 
Uh, again, this is that Texas mountain laurel. Um, it's evergreen, so it's really, really nice, and it flowers these beautiful purple flowers all summer long. Um, and then you have, I'm sorry, it's not all summer, but for a good, for several weeks during the, uh, during the, I think it is the summertime. Plumbago, this will provide a nice, huge pop of color here in the, um, during all of the summer months. These guys start blooming in late spring and go all the way until we have a freeze, at least in the Houston area. So they just really, and they're very soft and flowy. So it definitely defeats the contemporary style look that, that, that most of my clients would or when somebody says contemporary plumbago isn't what I think of but they specifically requested plants that also would help with butterflies and, and birds and things like that um, and plumbago is a great fit for that along with that firecracker kind of the same thing in that in that respect too um, just making sure that all my details are right Again, you can kind of see I did some dwarf hamlin grasses. So yes, if somebody happens to run over this bed, the grass won't exactly look great, but it'll recover compared to like a boxwood. If they ran over a boxwood, you just have to replace it because it's just going to break the branches. This is a sweet olive here. You can let this guy get to be larger and totally cover up this column, or you can keep it trimmed. Trimming it once or twice a year could keep it to a good modest size in front of that column there. Add a little bit of height here with this tree. I think it also helps provide a little bit of shade to this area. You can let it get to be as large as you want or you can prune it and keep it small. The only drawback to putting a crepe myrtle next to a driveway, you have to make sure you understand what your clients are asking for in the fact that if, because um, crepe myrtles do drop a lot of debris um, so, but I thought a oak or a maple would just be too large for the size of this front yard. Um, and those definitely drop a lot of debris as well too. So finishing up, choosing up my color, my materials, just really trying to get everything to look as close to, um, what's actually there as possible. I decided to add in a few more plants here in the front yard and just kind of see if do I need to add in some more things just getting your spacing right is really important you don't want large voids in the landscape um, unless that's the style that they want so knowing what your clients want or if you're the client knowing what you want what style the planting you like is very important um, so here right before I shut off I added one more quick little plant a uh, I added a, a butterfly bush right in here. Again, it goes against the idea of contemporary, but it definitely allows for those butterflies and things like that to go in there. So yeah, enjoy this episode. And then I'm going to be working on the backyard in the next one. In part three of this one, we're going to be doing an outdoor kitchen, um, all kinds of fun stuff for this uh, project and uh, outdoor kitchen pergola is what the uh, is what the clients wanted and then they have a limited space so we're going to be showing you how to work in a limited space in the backyard thank you mm -hmm.